case you can't tell from the title of this video, Mac OS X Lion has come out, and this is going to be a video on how to install it on a Hackintosh. Now since it was an App Store only download, you couldn't buy a DVD. A lot of people were wondering how in the world you were going to do a fresh install. Um, this is definitely possible, and this video is going to be obviously showing you guys how to do that. So um, before I go into this, if you just if you own like a legit Mac or even a Hackintosh, and you want to just go right from Snow Leopard to Lion, you want to keep all your files, and I'll say right up front, this is not the video for you because everything will be deleted on your partition. So if you want to just simply upgrade, you want to just go from Snow Leopard to Lion and have all your files intact, go ahead and click right here, and that will take you to my previous video in which I showed you how to upgrade. Now, so just once again, this is going to be a video on how to do a clean install. This is going to wipe your slate absolutely clean, and you're going to have to re, um, restore everything. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to need is Mac OS X Lion, very obviously. So um, if you haven't already, the, go to the App Store right there in your dock. Just you know, click that. It's pretty simple. And uh, search Lion, click it, and buy it. Pretty easy. 3.49 gigabyte download should take, you know, on my internet I have 3 megabit down, took about 3 hours, nothing too big of a download, but so go ahead and get Mac, uh, Mac OS X Lion application from the App Store. You're also going to need, um, go ahead and click that link right there, down in the description, that will take you to Tony Mac X86 forums, great, great website if you have any sort of Hackintosh questions, people there are geniuses, they really know what they're doing, so... Um, if you have any questions that I can't answer or s questions about specific hardware or anything, go ahead and check them out. But for the purpose of this video, you're going to need an application called XMove. And basically that's going to let us boot from that um, Mac OS X Lion install. So that will let us make a bootable partition and then we're good to go. And you're also going to need a bootloader. If you're doing a fresh install, um, you will not have a bootloader installed and that you will need it. So the, also down in the link, probably the second or third link down there, I will link you to a chameleon bootloader and which you can which I recommend you just install to a flash drive like I'll be using like I've used in all my videos I just have it very handy and so you need a bootloader so that you can boot into it and from there then you can use multi-beast and you can set a bootloader to boot whenever you um, boot up your computer so with that in mind those three things get them all ready and let's go ahead and get started okay so before we get started i do want to say that i am already running lion this video is being recorded right after my upgrade video so i am on 10.7 but this really won't affect this because i am simply doing a fresh install so what you want to do first is run the actual lion installation as you see i have it right here if you just download it from the mac app store it will just be in your dock so that's pretty self-explanatory so just go ahead and run this and so you want to click continue and this will not actually install Lion, this is just going to copy the files necessary. And so I will say um, in advance that this will reboot your machine after, um, right after it's done. So you want to just go ahead and restart your machine. So just hit OK. And you do want to install it to Macintosh HD, that is absolutely fine. There is no need in the world to change this. So just go ahead and click install, type your password. And off we go. This usually takes about... It says three minutes here, but last time I did this, it took about two. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording since it's going to ask me to restart. And so when it's done, I will be so restarted. So now that your system has rebooted, you now want to go into Disk Utility. So we'll open up, open up Disk Utility here. And what you want to do is click on your main hard drive, the one you want it on. Don't click on an individual partition, just click on the hard drive. And come over here to Partition. Now on your main hard drive, you can see I have you know, Scratch, that's for Final Cut and this is my windows so on Macintosh HD I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this by adding another partition to this and I'm gonna make this 8 gigabytes and I'm gonna call it install much like my upgrade video so I'm gonna go ahead and apply that and this error is just from Tuxera NTFS that's no biggie so as you can see the install partition has now been created and Macintosh HD has been shrunk. So now what you want to do is go to wherever your um, Lion application is, in my case it's applications, much like yours probably will be, and now what you want to do is once you find it, right click and show package contents. That will bring you here, go to contents, shared support, and this right here, much like my upgrade video, once again, you need to mount this, otherwise XMove will not work. So now that, that is mounted, minus me going into mission control there, I want to go ahead and run XMove. So now what you want to do is just click continue through this, now stop. Stop right here and make sure you click change install location. If you install this to your Macintosh HD right now, 
things will mess up and you probably will ruin your partition and you won't be able to boot from it. So go ahead and change the install location to the partition that you just made, which in our case would be install. Click continue, install, type in my password, which is very secure. And this will probably take anywhere from two to five minutes, depending on your system. So once this is done, I will be right back. So as you can see, it is now done installing. And from here, you just want to go ahead and reboot your machine. So I'm going to go up and restart my machine. And she is now restarting. So now what you want to do is, much like the upgrade video, is once you get to your bootloader, you want to interrupt the automatic boot and you want to boot from the install partition. So what Xmove basically did was it just made this partition bootable. It took the files right out of the install ESD and put them on this partition so that you could boot from this partition and install it from here much like you would just a DVD or a flash drive. So um, here's the bootloader. I'm going to go ahead and hit a key and that takes me here and as you can see my install partition is now there along with my other ones. There's Windows and my backup drive. So I'm going to go ahead and go to install and hit enter. And it's as simple as that. So now I will go ahead and zoom out of here. And we get the Apple logo. And this should only take a few seconds to boot. It's really not going to take long. If it was a DVD, it would probably take a lot longer. But since it's on a hard drive, it has faster uh, read speeds. So this will only take probably a few seconds. And as you can see, it has now booted. And I now have my mouse in hand. Let's zoom out a little for you guys. And here you go. So as you can see, here's all the scrolling languages. I'll go ahead and zoom into this for you guys. So I'm going to click this little arrow here. Continue. Agree to the terms. And so now I want to, if I, if you just wanted to upgrade, then you go ahead and click that. The, whatever hard drive that you have the Snow Leopard on. And there you go. But so instead we want to do a fresh install. So that involves us coming up here. Zoom out for you guys a little bit. Up here to Utilities, we're going to open up Disk Utility. So I'll bring Disk Utility down a little. And so here's my hard drive, and here's Macintosh HD. So I'm just going to go ahead and erase this. So you can name it whatever you would like here. So simply erase. So now this is going to erase everything on Macintosh HD. It is all gone. And I will say, make sure that you know you back up your Lion app, put it on a separate hard drive before you do this. Otherwise, you'll lose it. So you'll just have to re-download 3.49 gigabytes. Not fun. So I'm going to go ahead and just quit Disk Utility. It's now Macintosh HD. I don't believe there's any customization options. Not quite sure why, but uh, they're just not there. So Macintosh HD, and we're going to just go ahead and install. And um, I would assume this is about going to take about 15 to 20 minutes. As you see there, it says now 19, but it did say 20. Now we're down to 18. So I assume it would take about that long. That's probably actually a pretty accurate estimate. So I'll be back when this is done. Okay, so as you can see, the installation has succeeded. So I'm just going to go ahead and restart. But while I do that, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my bootloader on my flash drive here. And my BIOS is set up so that it will automatically boot from USB, so I don't have to worry about going... Okay, so here's the Chameleon bootloader. You won't see this first one here. Um, this is just because I have Lion on this on this flash drive as well. But so here's Macintosh HD install my Windows and my backup. So obviously we want to boot Macintosh HD or whatever you decide to name yours. So this will be Lion. So just go ahead and uh, hit enter. And this won't look very pretty. This won't be you know the, the standard Apple boot logo. This is kind of like a verbose boot. It just shows you what goes on behind the scenes of that beautiful boot logo but we are now booting in the Lion. So I mean don't be scared about any of this stuff. If you don't know what it means that's fine because to tell you the truth I don't. I don't think many people do. Um, this is all just, I mean it does change with every boot as well. I mean a lot of this stuff will be the same but you know in a different order or something so if you don't know what something failed means and don't worry about it at all it's really nothing to worry about so don't let the screen scare you. 
and because I booted with that um, bootloader I will not have graphics drivers so this really won't be optimized but as you can see um, the welcome screen is here so I'm going to go ahead and click continue I'll go ahead and zoom into this for you guys continue again because I do have a US keyboard here's my um, internet my Wi-Fi is working out of the box so I'll go ahead and set this up type my web key okay so I'm going to go ahead and click continue I do not want to transfer anything I'll go ahead and enter my Apple ID okay so setting up my account I need to take a picture uh, penguin looks pretty nice And so it has my uh, time zone all set up. Continue, and I'm going to start using Lion. Sounds fun. So like I said before, my system is by no means optimized at all. As you can see, I have a horrible resolution. Right, so basically what I want to do is I want to run MultiBeast. That's going to be the, the big fix to all of our problems. So I'm just going to go ahead, and I'm going to go to where I have MultiBeast. This is also in, in the description. Um, it's right on the Tony Mac X86 forums. Very easy to find. Just search for it. You'll find it. So OS 10 stuff, multi beast. The newest version at the point at the time of this recording is 3.8. So I want to go ahead and click continue, continue, and this will change on every single system. I mean, it really all just depends on your hardware. So, I mean, don't take exactly the same things I'm doing here, but um, just make sure that you know what you're doing in terms of, you know, what your hardware is and everything. So, just like I, like I said, you really have to do your research here. So, I'm going to go ahead and come back here because I do have a DSDT. Okay, so I'm going to do user DSDT. Kex and enablers. I want my audio. There's those two. Disk. J Micron. Fake SMC plugins. Okay, we'll do USB 3.0 because my motherboard does support it. Network, links to Mac, it's a great one. Bootloaders, this is probably one of the most important things. Chimera. You definitely want Chimera. And I'm just going to do a quick test. This is booted in 64-bit by default. That's something new with Lion. So I do not need a 64-bit enabler in here at all. So that's very cool. So that's going to go away. Customization, boot options. Like I said, I, I no longer need this because Lion boots 64-bit by default. So that's great. So now I want to set my system definition as a Mac Pro 3.1. Um... I believe that's it. So I'm just going to go ahead and click continue. It's going to install the Macintosh HD. That's perfect. Type in my password. And this will start installing. Okay, so now here's my Ethernet. Continue, 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 agree. I'm just going to do the release version. I have no reason to do the, to do the debug version. And this won't take too long to install. But like I said, um, you might not need all these things. Just make sure you know what you're doing. You need to know if you need a DSDT or if you don't. You need to know what hardware is supported and so you know, what graphics cards. Everything you really need to know about your system if you want to maintain a successful Hackintosh. I really can't stress that enough. You really have to do your research. Tony Mac X86 forums are a great place for that. You you can really learn a lot within a couple hours there. So just make sure you know what your hardware is. You know that's the biggest part of having a Hackintosh. The key is in the hardware, you know, the software works great, but it has to work with the hardware. So now I'm just going to go ahead and restart, and once this restarts, I will take out my flash drive, and I will prove to you that this is booting right from the hard drive. Okay, and it is now rebooting, just some ugly little code there from the bootloader. And the flash drive is now out, I'll just set it over here. And the system will boot like normal, and it will come to the Chimera bootloader. And from there, I will just be able to simply boot OS X right from the hard drive. And we'll be good to go with a fresh install of Lion. And the, the biggest advantage of a fresh install is probably just speed. Fresh installs are always nice and fast. And with OS X, they typically last a long time. So here's the bootloader. I won't hit any keys. I'll just let it count down. That's fine.
Alright, so there's the Majestic Apple logo. Very nice. There's no kernel panics or anything. I mean, it's just booting like it should. I think Mac OS X Lion, in terms of the bootloader, is much more stable than even 10.6.8 was. 10.6.8, I had a lot of problem with the bootloaders after a while. Like it would add, it would kernel panic like two or three times, before, like just trying to restart, and it would work on like the third or fourth try. It was getting to the point where it was just ridiculous. So that's where this bootloader really saved me. But Lion, I have not had that issue once yet. It's great. And as you can see now, I have both monitors. Um, I have my full monitors being used. So I have graphics. I now have audio. As seen there. Um, I now have Ethernet. Everything really is just working like it should right now. So that's pretty much it. I'll go ahead and I'll come here. Just to prove that I am indeed running 10.6. Or 10.7. Excuse me. I have to get 10.6 out of my head now. But there you go. 10.7. I'll open up the more info, not really system profiler anymore, but as you can see everything is here, there's that early 2008, that Mac Pro 3.1, uh, both my displays are up and running, there's all my hard drives, my partitions, all my memory is recognized, 64-bit is up and kicking, and that's pretty much it. So before this video gets any longer, I'm at CPUKid on Twitter, also check out itechcity.org and at itechcity on Twitter, and uh, let me know if this video helped you guys, let me know below if you're plan on updating the line right away. Like I said at the beginning of this video, uh, please just buy Line. It's only $30. There's really no excuse to not buy it. It's such a great OS and a lot of great engineering went into it. And for $30, you really can't beat it. So I guess that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching.